Hi and welcome to Three Forks Podcast. As this is the first episode, I thought I would take a moment to explain a little bit about the format of this podcast. So the idea is to have wine and food related conversation, potentially having a wine tasting mixed in, similar to the ones we normally arrange in London. In these tastings, we try four wines blind, either being very specific, such as only oak aged tempranillos from the Iberia del Duero, or something a much more broader, like Italian red wine. In fact, talking about red Italian wines, in one of the episodes that will be aired at a later date, we will talk with a guy that is very passionate about making sourdough bread. He's so passionate that he actually mills his own flour in his apartment in London. In this episode, we try the winner of a former blind tasting. That was a blend of Montepulciano Sangiovese from Rosso Piceno, which is located in central Italian region of Marche. So this specific wine was a Sassiolo Rosso Piceno 2014 Monteschiavo. And if you go to www.threeforks.co.uk and click on best wines, you will find this winner amongst other blind tasting winners with links and maps related to this region. So this part of the website is quite good to check out just in case you want any wine recommendations. Now to today's episode. This is a conversation I had with Sofia from Wine Roads of Greece, where we talk about the different types of wine they produce in Greece. So I recently went to Greece and Sofia was kind enough to show me around the wine region of Nemea, which is about one and a half hour away from Athens, famous for its adjurgitico based wines. So in the end of this conversation, we're also trying out a Greek Mavro Daphne that's quite spectacular. And also I want to mention that this podcast will also be available on YouTube with some images and maps to kind of help you guide around uh, you know, the conversation. But none of these are actually necessary to follow the conversation. You can also check out these images and more maps on www.threeforks.co.uk where new posts and graphics are added weekly. But let's get started and uh, talk with uh, Sofia. Sofia, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you very much. Regards from Greece. How's the weather there? How hot is it now? Oh, it's really hot. It's it's steaming hot over 35 degrees, so all Ooh. Greece is going to the beach now, since it's already allowed. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when did uh, uh, when did they open up to do things in Greece? Last weekend, and also from uh, next Monday, we are allowed to travel to the island. So I think many people can uh, start their holidays and also hotel will be open soon. So we will be ready to accept some tourists around Greece. So when will they start accept tourists into the country? Uh, they say that probably from the 15th of June, the international flights uh, will be open as well. Late as 1st of July, but most probably from 15th of June. Maybe we can start with getting into how you came to Greece, you know, what made you interested in wine and a little bit about yourself, Sofia. Yeah, sure. So I started to come to Greece as a tour guide. I was a holiday rep for uh, Hungarian people. And then I fall in love with the country because it's beautiful. The people are just friendly and amazing. And then I moved to Greece uh, 11 years ago. A few years ago, I started to work with wines. I was a flight attendant on a private jet and I wanted to know more about wines. So I did the Kurt of Master Sommelier course uh, for the certified sommelier and then the WSCT level one, two and three courses. And since nice. I had an experience in the tourism and I really love the Greek wines, I fall in love with them. Uh, we started this new project to introduce Greek wines for foreign tourists as it's really worth uh, for the try. And the Greek wine yards are just given. It's a really lovely area. Some of them is close to the beach. Some of them is uh, more into the mountain regions. Yeah, it's really worth a visit and a uh, worth to try the Greek wines because they are just they are just amazing. How long do you think that Greek wines have been, you know, fantastic? Uh, you know, when when I read a little bit before, you know, we were talking about only until the nineteen eighties. Uh, you know, after that, then they started to oh, focus nice. less when on that? bulk wines and then go more to high quality wines. Do you agree with that or? Uh, what is your perception of uh, Greek wine? Yes, absolutely. Your information is correct. After the 1980s, they started to create a quality wine. And uh, during the last 10 years, they are growing and making even more fabulous wines. 
and they are really getting um, to know the new technologies, the new taste. And unfortunately, they don't have a really good marketing yet, but they are yeah. really getting their uh, as taste and quality to the top. So. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, when 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 we went to Nemea and it was you see some wines and you see the Greek letters, right? Then you're like, how do I how do I find this? You know, you go to on on the internet and you don't have, you know, if you're not Greek, then you don't have a Greek, uh, you know, dictionary or or, or letters. So you're like, how do I search for this wine? You take an image, but then you can't find it. So I guess that was also one thing that's always recur reoccurring with Greek wine is that you know it was often written in Greek and how would some non-Greek find it? You know, how how do you know how to pronounce it so i guess do you think that was a factor of why it's not more famous or uh well first of all greek wine has a bad reputation from the past including the sweet uh, mavro daphne what yeah. uh, usually was the wine of alcoholics <laughs> because it was an easy drinking wine and also the very bad uh, retina what was an old kind of uh, bulk wine. So if you are talking to someone about Greek wines, the first thing that comes into their mind is, uh, the, oh, retina, ooh, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, it's not true. So um, I think the Greek wine um, committee has to work more about uh, letting people know that Greek wine has changed a lot and also yeah. to put it on the market, uh, better labels. Uh, they are working on it. A lot of winery has uh, already changed their labels, what is for import. And of course, yeah. it's uh, accessible in different languages, depends uh, on the country of the import. And also some uh, people are working on better and uh, more sophisticated labels. So uh, it will be more uh, recognizable abroad and people can uh, find it uh, more easily than they have done in the past. So Greece is actually not a new wine country, but it has a lot of history. Do you know exactly how long they have been making wine? Uh, well, they, they, they say so that ancient Greeks already did wines in amphora, this traditional uh, method of yeah. wines, but uh, no one exactly knows that uh, <laughs> if it was a Greek or a Romian or, or, or who was the one first made wine. You know, I think this will be a forever argument between the nations who made the first wine. <laughs> In order to kind of better organize Greek wine as a whole, could you explain a little bit more about the grapes you would find and the types of wine uh, those would generate? Would it be fair to say that mainly the Greek islands create easy to drink white wine while the mainland is more of a mix of red and white? Especially with the north being perhaps a little bit more focused on the red wines. It can be, but it's mainly the region. That's why right, that the North Greece is mainly known as a Xinomavro, but also the well known of uh, Malagusia Sirtico blend. What was yeah. first uh, was made in uh, North Greece and after it became uh, the signature of the Northern Greek wineries. Yeah, I was, I was trying another one in, um, I was trying one, it was called Ciro. Uh, Xero and, and uh, we had a wine tasting and it was actually the winner and, and it was Sinomavro and Roditis and, and it's a red wine right but then I read this a white grape so I guess they are not like but, but in, overall in Greece right they're, they're doing a lot of kind of rosé and, and, and mixes as well is that is that correct? Uh, well now it uh, became more famous but uh, it's not really correct they are not the most famous of uh, their rosé yet they are they are not yeah. just there yet there is a lot of uh, old traditional rosé, the darker uh, grape color made from uh, Xinomavro and Ayurgitico. And nowadays they are, uh, they are trying to go into better rosés like uh, Ktima Muson has a great rosé, um, Amuse and also Avantis from Evia. They have a really, really nice uh, rosé wines. Uh, nor some northern Greek uh, wineries from Sinomavra, they are making amazing rosés as well. So it depends, but now we start to get the fashion. You know, there is always the fashion. Um, uh, nowadays, everyone likes this Provencian style rosé, but it's a salmon yeah. light uh, pink color. And yeah. you have to find the right winemaking technique to, to have uh, such a rosé, a really light, very easily drinkable uh, wine, especially for the hot summer. Yeah. I remember one of the more more memorable ones that we yeah, I tried was the uh, it was uh, Moscow Filero uh, and Asirtico Rosé and Amphora, the Skouras one, a very aromatic.
Yes, yes, uh, Moschofilero. Uh, uh, if you translate the name of Moschofilero, it comes from the really um, strong smell. So let, let's go into, you know, uh, the, the wine roads of Greece and a little bit of what kind of things you guys do and what kind of trips do you, uh, where you take your uh, you know, clients. Uh, where we are offering at the moment uh, two types of trips. We have a big grape escape, what is uh, especially for wine lovers, it's a five days trip. Uh, northern Greece or you can go to the Peloponnese or we have an island hopping combining uh, Crete and Santorini. Uh, uh, as we mentioned, the northern Greece is uh, mainly well known from uh, Xinomavro, but it's a really great uh, red wine. It's a kind of Pinot Noir type of red wine. It, uh, it has a very good aging potential. This is actually my favorite. If you taste it, it, uh, it brings you a really strong uh, tomato taste and smell. Uh, but um, a very nice uh, wine, what can blend it with uh, different uh, uh, varieties in the northern part of Greece. The main place of Nausa. So we are offering, of course, a full day in Nausa in different wineries. And we are continuing our way to Drama, to northern, northern Greece, where they have uh, excellent wines and they are producing a lot of foreign uh, varieties like uh, Syrah and Sauvignon Blanc. And of course, there is this local variety, Malagosia and uh, Assyrtiko in the northern Greece. So uh, during the five days, we are trying to taste as much wine as possible and uh, I really love this region because they have excellent wineries. So one would fly into Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki, Thessaloniki <laughs> yes, uh, you fly to Thessaloniki and then you find, uh, then uh, you spend five days to taste wine and eat great Greek fruits. You know, when you're pairing uh, food with wine, there is one basic rule: local food goes great with local wine. And this is our aim as well, to, to bring people into the Greek gastronomy experience, including wine and food. I was just looking at the, the specific region earlier. So it looks to be a, li- a little bit less than two hours drive from, uh, from that. Saloniki. And, uh, <laughs> pronounce. and uh, it's a kind of small city, right? Very close to the you know, North Macedonian uh, border. Yes, that's correct. It's uh, close to Firom, but um, the main wine regions are not very close to Saloniki. So you fly to Saloniki and yeah. also now so it's about two, two and a half hour drive. And then to go to Drama is about two and a half, three hours drive. So we are sleeping in different small cities uh, yeah. to get the wine tasting around. We are arranging some uh, dinners and lunches also in wineries. So it's a full experience. And of course, uh, if the weather is suitable, then you can enjoy the beach because uh, Halkidiki has beautiful beaches uh, and, and great sea. And what is better in Greece than to have uh, your favorite wine on the beach? I'm looking at the wine map that we have on Three Forks website and showing the big wine regions and, and the great varieties that they have in there. In this region, we have Amindeo and Nausa. What would you say are the big differences between these two wine regions? Uh, well, Nausa has a, this Xinomavro more like a Burgundy type Pinot Noir. It has a longer staging potential and stronger. Amindeo has a Xinomavro as well, but it's lighter and it's less floral and light in tannins. Okay, so that's the north. So that's a five day trip. Do you do like kind of shorter trips as well or is it more or is it five day? Here in the North Greece, not at the moment, a uh, short day's trip we are organizing only from Athens. We are yeah. offering uh, four different uh, short day's trip, one day trip from Athens. Uh, one is going to the mid- central Greece. What is uh, mainly, if you go to central Greece, is the um, Atalanti Valley, the Valley of Muson. You can include Evi Island. And they have some great wineries and some really interesting Greek uh, varieties. If you go to Atalanta region, there is a biggest and most traditional winery is Hadzi Mihalis. They are very famous of Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. And it's a really old and traditional winery. I, I must say that one of my favorite as a, as a site, because it's really a huge estate and, uh, and one of the most uh, enjoyable estates. 
So, so where was this again? It's in Atalanti, where in central Greece. And, and Attica is basically, that's the area around Athens, is that correct? It's correct. Um, and that is where they had the grape variety Savationa, right? Yes, uh, the white uh, grape variety is more with the citrus fruits and grass. And now th- nowadays uh, wineries like to age it in oak and it gives another yeah. uh, Savationo style. It's really nice. This is a new favorite. It's mainly, it was one of the base of uh, Retina wines. Now, Retina is a tricky wine because it has a very bad reputation, but nowadays people, some wineries are uh, creating really great Retinas. And how do you feel about Retina? Uh, well, it depends. Sometimes it's nice, especially in a hot summer day, it's a very chilling wine. Uh, but generally, this is my fav- father's favorite, actually. <laughs> but oh. I- I- if I can choose between Retina or some other white wine, I would go to some other white wines. I always tell to my tourists, there is no bad wine, there is no good wine. It depends on your taste, what you like. If we now go to the uh, to the Peloponnese, uh, that kind of wine region, so is, would you say that Nemea is the big wine region here or, or Mantinea or, or where would you say it's kind of the most famous uh, wine region? Nemea is the most famous. This is the biggest in uh, Greece. We are also having one uh, day uh, tour to Nemea. Nemea is a small village with uh, a lot of small wineries. And of course, our main grape variety, as we already said, Ioritico Essentials grape. It's a real high in tannins, a very dark red uh, grape. A lot of uh, red fruit comes out from this grape. Uh, They are making more style of wine from it. Uh, They are making uh, some fresh Ioritico. And my favorite one, uh, it goes through oak aging and then it gets a uh, softer tannins. Also okay. from uh, white wine, you can find here uh, Moscofilero, this uh, really strong uh, aromatic wine. Nemea is a PDO. So I assume this is similar to DOs and, and similar in other countries. Could you please elaborate? It's a product designation of origin. Okay. That means that the product uh, is original from that region. So Ayurjitico Ayurjitico must come from uh, Ayurjitico will be PDO if it comes from Nemea. Yeah. So any other wines is not actually PDO. So it would just be Nemea wine, but not the no. PDO. No. Yeah. And uh, this is not always the best things because we already said about. Um, uh, Mavro Daphne, what uh, I said that uh, it has a bad reputation of the old sweet red wine and they yeah. made it PDO of Patras. But uh, the best Mavro Daphne comes from Kefalonia Island. And because it has to be PDO of Patras, they cannot make it anymore PDO of Kefalonia. So sometimes it's good, it's, it's saving um, the wine of origin and uh, it gives an extra value, but it's not uh, always 100% the best uh, classification. I guess it's the same principle as classing of wine as table wine rather than the specific appellation. Uh, you know, one might do that in order to intentionally to make the exact wine they want to do and not caring so much about the region's rules. I guess it's something quite nice when you have stab- very established regions that people know very well, like France, in order to provide variation and depth, but also evolution to my- winemaking. Uh, but it also kind of creates a chaos if you don't have very clear classifications, especially for a region that's not as famous, where wines we don't know much about if all the wines are very, very different from each other. Exactly. It, it helps. It mainly helps, but it's not always the best. So which wine region in Greece would you say is the most established, well-known one? Uh, definitely Nemea. I would say yeah. de- de- definitely Nemea in, uh, in, in Greece and uh, also Santorini, but yeah. uh, Santorini is an island, so, um, and it's a home of Assyrtiko, it's fabulous, my favorite white wine. Yeah. Uh, it's really expensive, they are making great wine uh, out of it. It grows in a special basket way, so the wind uh, won't bother it. They are not allowed to water it, so irrigation is not allowed. So all the moisture, what the wine uh, vineyard get is from the salty sea and the morning mist. So yeah. therefore the grape will and the wine will get this special um, salty character. So if you taste a real Assyrtico from Santorini, it will have a mineral character from the volcanic soil of Santorini. 
and yeah. it will have the salty character from the sea. And it's a totally different style of Assyrtiko when they are creating in the mainland because the Assyrtiko wine from the mainland is more fruity. I also heard that they're, they're starting out to do kind of oak aged uh, Assyrtiko as well in Santorini. And they also started, and they also yes. have their kind of pasito style, you know, when they lay out uh, the grapes and let them dry. Kind of like the Amarone style. Uh, yes, uh, yes, it's the Win Santo, the sweet wine. And it's so really, it's really expensive. Wine. Very, very good, very famous, but pretty expensive. Yeah, I would assume so. I'm not sure if this is an accurate perception, but it feels like Santorini really the last few years have kind of been exploding in terms of kind of the media skating and the popularity. Do you agree with this? Absolutely. Um, what is also, it has a negativity as well, because Santorini, sometimes Santorini, especially in the uh, main season, is really overcrowded. You can yeah. just not move. So if you want to visit Santorini and to drink some wine, that the, the best period is in May or end of September, beginning of October. So that kind of time frame goes for all of Greece or just for Santorini? Uh, I would always, uh, because Greece is a pretty hot country, I'm always uh, advising that uh, having a full bigger wine trip, it would be suitable around May. Or, or October when uh, the harvest is over, so the wineries are more free to accept tourists or the end of September. And uh, therefore we have uh, our five days trips always uh, timed at the, um, for May or uh, for October, because this is the best, best time to take, go around, taste wine and uh, not to sweat all around and just uh, wishing, for, <laughs> wish, wishing to, to have a swim in the sea. <laughs> then you All can right. enjoy it more and also we are we are combining uh, Santorini wine tasting with Crete. Crete uh, has really great uh, wines as well in the area of um, uh, Iraklio. There are a lot of wineries. One of the most famous is Lidarakis and also there comes one of my favorite wine. It's called Daphne. Uh, it, it's like bay leaf and it smells and tastes like a bay leaf and it's fantastic but this is the only winery that creates this white wine. So we are combining Crete and Santorini together, uh, what is worth to, to join and, and taste a different type of wines. The, also Peloponnese, we are offering five days trip. Uh, the one day trip, you can do it anytime you want. Um, Especially uh, if you come to Athens, then maybe in two, three days, you can see all the Athens and all the beaches around. So maybe you just want one day uh, for your wine. And then we can take you to Nemea, or we can take you to central Greece, to Evia, or uh, close to Patras, where you can find some uh, great wines as well because of the terroir. It's, it's really unique. And how, by the way, how is the, the wine, wine scene in, uh, in Athens? So we went to this bar that was quite fantastic. They had a huge selection of international wines, and they do like wine tastings every week. Could you remind me of the name of that one? Oh, uh, yes, uh, Innocent. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, we so, have uh, we are also offering wine bar uh, hoppings in Athens. We have we are uh, combining two wine bars. In one by uh, one, uh, in both wine bars, we can taste uh, great grape varieties, and in one uh, we are uh, just um, pairing with some Greek wines and small bites. At the other one, we are pairing a whole uh, dining experience with wine. So a five course meal with five different Greek wines. And of course, awesome. they have their uh, own sommelier to explain everything uh, to our tourists about the wines. And uh, it's just a great experience. Wine, um, wine bars are growing like mushrooms in Athens, but, uh, <laughs> but not all of them is good. But we, we are trying to offer and, and, uh, and show the best uh, wine bars and sometimes the coziest wine bars in the city. So I was reading that like the average person drink in Greece drinks 25 liters of wine per year. I, I guess it's, that's a lot of wine, you know. <laughs> I, I didn't know, but uh, pro most probably all of uh, most of those wines are uh, bulk wines. Because if you are yeah. going to a Greek taverna, they will not serve you a bottled wine. They will just serve you in a small uh, carafe, what is like a metallic um, pot. They will they will yeah. just serve you wine according to kilo. If you want a half kilo or one kilo wine, uh, and <laughs> then this uh, what you will drink with your traditional Greek food. It, it's not always bad wine, so don't yeah. don't, don't mis uh, mistake and um, it might be a really good quality wine. Yeah. Just it it doesn't come in bottle. 
So I recently ordered a case of Greek wines just to try some out. And I sent you the list of them and said, choose the most interesting one. And you said the Papargirio. And this is the one we're going to try today. It's uh, Mavro Daphne. You are having this 2013. I'm having the 2017 in uh, my hand. So 24 day maceration I see here. So 18 months in oak barrels, unfiltered. Yes, exactly. It is a dry Mavro Daphne. Uh, Papargirio has a, a great uh, winery close to the Corinth Bay. Uh, he's making fantastic wine. He's not a huge winery. It's a small family winery, but uh, he's really taking care of the quality of the wine. And whatever he produces, they are just amazing. I really love his wines. And this Mavro Daphne is also one of the best uh, Mavro Daphne you can find uh, besides some great Mavro Daphne from Catalonia. So this is, so let's see, I'm just going to bring up the map here. This would be the, the Corinth, where, could you remind me where that could be? Uh, <laughs> Corinth is uh, the south uh, from Athens. It's one, about one and a half hour drive from Athens. The Corinth Channel, one hour, one and a half hour. And then his winery is in Laliotti. If you go down to the Corinth Channel, then on the you go toward the west uh, part of Peloponnese, but it's just like half an hour from the Corinth Channel. So you you, you shouldn't go very west. In, in the mountain, uh, pretty close to, he has vineyards, pretty close to the sea, but towards the Nemea as well. Um, so he can he can produce different uh, wines, different style of wines, and he's just building his new winery with a fabulous tasting room. So I guess it will be ready with him one year. So if you are coming to Greece, uh, we would be more than happy to take you there. Uh, awesome. So, so I have none in my hands. So basically, what um, so it's, it's so dark, you know, it's it's uh, you know high intensity in terms of color. And then smell also, it's, you know, it's very aromatic. Do you agree? Um, yeah, and it has a uh, dark chocolate, uh, oak smell, and also some uh, strong red fruit smell. It also has this kind of earth in, earth nose, I think. So, uh, you know, kind of cinnamon, uh, not so much, but baking Yours, spice. So yes, because it, you have a certain uh, with you, so it it, it uh, aged more. Uh, mine, is, mine is pretty fresh yet, but it has a yeah. great aging potential. So I'm sure that at the moment you're, you're drinking a really nice wine. <laughs> well, I haven't started drinking it yet. But yeah, you can really smell the, uh, you can really smell the oak here. In terms of the flavor, I really must say it has this kind of sour, what I sometimes um, call kind of Belgian yeast, this kind of sour, salty sourness to it that I, I really find. I was trying some Austrian wines and I haven't tried, had that much Austrian wine so far, but all of them had this kind of uh, this kind of sourness, which kind of sounds maybe bad, but it's actually quite nice. It's a nice long character. This wine has a really, really long aftertaste. And it has this uh, chocolatey, black chocolate aftertaste and then kind of uh, might uh, be bitter for some people, but this is a typical Mavro Daphne note. Okay. The long, yeah. bitterish uh, aftertaste, but it's, it, it's really nice. And it uh, goes great with some Greek mazes. It also has quite a, like, a high acidity for... Uh, I thought it was going to, you know, 2013, I thought it was going to be in, in oak. I thought it was going to be a little bit less acidic, but uh, I was, you know, it's quite sharp. It's a, it's a great wine. But <laughs> let's ensure everyone that if you take this wine and, and you just want to make some uh, roast, it will go fantastically with your, with your Sunday roast. So if anyone wants to go to Greece or is interested in Greek wines and want to contact you, what is the easiest way to get in touch? So you can find us in Instagram. Just find Wine Roads of Greece, of course, on Facebook in the, under the same name. Or you can just visit our website, uh, www.winerdsofgreece.com. And you can find all the information. Or if you're interested in just uh, about some wines and Greek wines, then you can follow my private Instagram, what is uh, Wine Princess Sophia. And I'm posting 
a lot of Greek wine awesome. from so, uh, Greek So yeah, so if you want to follow Sofia more on, on uh, you know, if you're interested in doing any wine trips to Greece, then you, you know who to ask and where to go. So check out uh, her Instagram and the website. And also make sure to follow uh, Three Forks on Instagram to see what we are doing and, and the tasting. And yeah, thank you so much for your time, Sofia. Well, thank you very much uh, for the small uh, wine introduction. And really, if anyone just have any question, doesn't want to make a wine trip, just want to know uh, something about Greek wine or want to buy some Greek wine, then uh, feel free to message me and uh, I will be more than happy to reply. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Sofia. Have a lovely summer. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy this uh, weird summer. I hope that it will be better for everyone shortly and come to Greece. I really hope that you liked this episode. Please visit our website. Again, it's www.3forks.co.uk and check the latest post. Or you can use the search button to search for podcast Greek wine and you'll be able to see the, all the relevant links and graphics to this episode. And you would also see links to some of the mentions in this conversation, such as wineries and so on. I would also really appreciate if you would follow Three Forks on Instagram and on YouTube. We will be publishing new events in London shortly after this corona lockdown. Thank you for listening. Also, thank you Autumn Parmud for this theme music.